place, a smile on every face. Children at play, time with family today. Someone fill my plate, homemade bread I can't wait. I can't get enough, I will always stay in touch with my Bahamaland, yeah. Rev Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. A body found near a cemetery off Cowpen Road. This has police report two overnight murders on Milton Street and Grand Bahama. A reformed gang member discusses why he left a life of crime. And a Bahamian Marine completes her tour of duty in Afghanistan. Those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil. And your MB12 weekend starts right now. Again for joining us. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the discovery of a body near a cemetery off Cowpen Road. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, says a body was discovered in what he called a makeshift grave around 3 this afternoon. We got into this and discovered the body of a human, what we believe to be that of a human being. And so at this stage, we, we know that we're satisfied that it is a body of, of an individual. We're not certain on the sex of this person, whether it's uh, male or female. It appears to be that of a female. Roll says a forensic analysis must now be conducted to confirm the sex of the individual and to determine the identity. Although police have not released an identity, people claiming to be relatives of the victim were visibly distraught at the scene this afternoon. Roll says it appears the body has been decomposing for about two weeks now. He would not confirm whether or not police have a suspect in custody in connection with this discovery. Well, a 19-year-old man is dead after being shot multiple times near his home last night. Police say the Milton Street resident was riding his bicycle in the area shortly after 9 p.m. when an armed man opened fire on him. The victim was shot in the shoulder, side and head. Reports are the gunman fled on foot, but officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, says someone in the area ought to have seen something that can help police with their investigation. What we do know is that... This male was riding his a bicycle when he was accosted by at least one male who produced a handgun and discharged several shots in his direction, hitting him multiple times, fatally wounding him. We appeal to persons in this uh, Milton Street community to provide information to their police. Uh, we know that a number of persons were here when this incident happened. Police on Grand Bahama are also investigating a homicide on that island. Authorities received information of a nightclub shooting on Queens Highway shortly before 2 this morning. When officers arrived on the scene, they met a man suffering from gunshot wounds to the upper body. He was transported to Rand Memorial Hospital, where we understand he later succumbed to his injuries. Two men, ages 26 and 21, are assisting police with their investigation into this incident. Well, a 22-year-old man is under heavy police guard in hospital after being shot by police early this morning. Officers were reportedly acting on intelligence when they visited a Nassau Street nightclub and observed a group of men exiting the establishment. Upon seeing the officers, one of the men in the group ran back into the club. Police went after him and that's when they say the man pulled a handgun from his waist, throwing it to another man. The second man then allegedly pointed the weapon at police. Reports are the officer feared for his life when he shot the gunman in his right leg. That man is now in stable condition. Police were able to recover the handgun along with a quantity of ammunition. 
Just about everyone has given their opinions on crime, but very few of those people have helped contribute to crime statistics. While a former top general in one of the country's most prolific gangs in the late 1990s is weighing in, saying it will only get worse until the root of the issue is addressed. Jasmine Bonmi has more in this report. Few people can truly understand why some people choose a life of crime, except those who have chosen to walk that path. No one understands that better than former gang member Drexel Deal, who by the age of 30 had been in and out of prison four times. Deal quickly rose to the rebellion's ranks and said he became one of the gang's top generals. I became one of his top generals quickly. Uh, and the reason I had a pension for doing the most ridiculous violent crime anywhere, anytime uh, in that regard. Uh, I went to prison at the age of 17 for shooting a security in the Mall of Marathon. And when I came out, it was like, I was like a little celebrity. But Deal, who was once charged with attempted murder and armed robbery, traded in his gun-toting lifestyle for the straight and narrow path. He credits one particular event for changing his life. On July 3, 1996, Deal and two accomplices attempted to rob an armored vehicle. During the botched robbery, he says he lost his sight after being shot four times. But changing his life would not be easy, as he would end up in prison two other times. I was made into a monster from Majesty Prison. All prisoners is a training ground. We used to call it the University of Yamacraw. All prisoners is a training ground. Uh, we, that's why the, it's not just Fox or Prison, you know. It's not just, it's the training ground all around the world. They're having the same problems. Young boys. And you see, we focus more on incarceration. We don't focus more on rehabilitation or what's called restorative justice. Now more than 10 years after leaving the gang, Deal says he is saddened by the state of crime in the country. Deal, who was kept in contact with former gang leaders and convicts for a book he has recently written, says it's evident that gangs are a thing of the past and organized crime rings are the order of the day. He believes it's nearly impossible to control young men who are not afraid to die. When the gangs were around, there was a lot more control. But when the gangs dissolved, it's like releasing a military army on a civilian city. It's crime and all that escalate. That, it's like basketball. You know, you expect the level of play in terms of basketball to get better, uh, not to go downward. But it's a dog-eat-lion game and when it comes to the streets. And when I say a dog-eat-lion game, it's the lion who's often killed by the dog instead of the other way around. When an individual makes a name for himself, uh, and sad to say, uh, when I was on the streets shooting, having two shootings and your belt was the big thing. But right now on the streets, having two murders on your belt is the end thing. The individual's own success becomes his downfall. He's hailed as a celebrity for killing somebody and winning the case. When he comes out, that becomes a noose around his neck. And that's, this is why I said it's a doggy lying game because often enough, it's the rookie gangster who often kills a more seasoned gangster. The former gang general turned motivational speaker says he doesn't see an end in sight with crime plans that only address hardened criminals, but not kids who are intrigued by crime. Let's get the home in order. And the other social issues will begin to dissipate. The whole African proverb states it best when it says, the ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. That's our challenge. Where do you see any ministry that focus on family affairs? We arming the police isn't going to resolve this. We're going to send them to prison. When they go to prison, they come back out more professionals. Deal says he hopes his story will resonate with other young men who may be following a similar path. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy.
As the Christie administration moves to regularize web shops this summer, the attorney for several web shop owners says they await information from government officials on the taxation of those businesses. Cabinet is expected to decide on a fee that web shops will be required to pay and how the money should be distributed. However, Wayne Monroe suggested numbers bosses won't be too happy if they end up paying the same amount of money as local casinos. Vonik Toot reports. Before government regularizes web shops this year, attorney Wayne Monroe, who represents several web shop owners, says they will lobby for the government to tax web shops less than it taxes local casino operators. He told MB12 the fact of the matter is web shops are not on the same level as major resorts like Atlantis and Bahamar. You make representations as to rates of taxation. I've been hearing all sorts of things about rates of taxation. The one thing that I would think would be self-evident. There would have to be a powerful argument for the rate of taxation to be any higher on Bahamians than it is on a non-Bahamian business. And in fact, there may be a good argument why taxation of a Bahamian business should be at a lower level than of a foreign business. In what Monroe called a victory for common sense, Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkom announced that he intends to present a proposal for the regularization of web shops to cabinet in two weeks and is pushing for this to be official by July 1st. Wilchcombe said the proposal will address a period of closure for web shops, a fee that web shops will be required to pay, and how the money should be distributed. Personally, I would have thought that when you look at the market that Atlantis, Barma, Bimini Bay is going to appeal to with their interactive licenses that is in the bill presently tabled before Parliament, that there'd be a powerful argument that the local industry should be taxed at a lower level than these mega resorts. Gaming is currently taxed under the Casino Taxation Act. The tax rate varies by gross winnings 10 to 15 percent for smaller casinos and for larger casinos, a declining variable rate between 25 percent and 5 percent. The latter rate applies to winnings in excess of $20 million. Monroe says he believes Bahamians have no problem with major casinos making millions, but they object to their own people doing well. It's a very competitive thing. Everyone is in business to make money, um, but a big part of the problem in my view, and I think I addressed one of their gatherings, is that we have a degree of self-hatred as black people and as black Bahamians, and a big part of their problem is people don't believe black people should make that much money, really and truly. They have no problems with Atlantis making it, or Bahama making it, or Bimini Bay making it. But a little black boy who come from Baintown or Camp Road or, or somewhere like that is no reason he should make that kind of money. Monroe says web shop owners have accepted that they will make less money after their businesses are regulated. Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Vonnie Toot.